Hi, this is Margo. This is Wednesday morning, July the 14th, 2021. I hope everyone is safe and doing as well as possible. This is uh, just a short informative video having to do with the U.S. Navy website regarding the sea ice thickness that we're looking at. This is the, for the Arctic view and I um, downloaded the data for the 17th which was yesterday for um, uh, 2021 back through 2014 so that we can look at how the ice has changed back through the, the recent years with this GLB model. Now for people who have not been following me that long um, or don't remember um, there are there are two different models on the Navy website and they changed they went to a new model in 2014 and so um, if you try to look at anything before I think it was like June June or July of 2014 when they instituted this new GLB model. The old model had ARC up here. So if you see ARC, that's a different model. And any, if you're looking at like sea ice thickness for 2012, it's going to say ARC. That was the model they were using then. And it, it was different parameters and you can't really compare accurately the two different models. So we can only go back to 2014 to get an accurate comparison as we're looking at the sea ice. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on that because I know, um, you know, people will say, oh, look at what it was, the sea ice thickness in 2012. Well, we can't really accurately compare that because that's the ARC model and now we're in GLB model. So, um, you know, unless you're doing this all the time, you're not aware of it. So, um, and it, you know, it's confusing. So, <clears throat> like we're going to go back through the years and just look and see what the sea ice looked like in the middle of the summer melt. Here we are yesterday. Now, I did my Sunday update, so this is just a couple of days after that. The sea ice um, takes on a different shape every single year, and after looking at these these different years, I, frankly, I'm amazed that we haven't reached a blue ocean event before before now. And um, so here we are, and the way you can tell. The year is here, 2021. The 07 is the month, 13 is the date that it's valid for. Um, th this date is the date that it, it, the data was gathered and it, it was run. This, so it was 2021 and it was July, July and the 12th. And this was the hour that it was run. But it's valid for for yesterday. So there it was um, yesterday. Here's what it looked like this time last year, and it's a different shape. We can see this um, Laptev Sea and Chukchi Sea. They've opened up a lot earlier last year. Also, there was less eyes here in the North Kara Sea this time last year. This eastern edge was melted in more. Um, the, there was not as much thick sea ice here in the Beaufort Sea, but this uh, area here in quadrant um, three and four, it was thicker. This we still had the what was left of the multi-year ice was down here above Canada and Greenland 
and now that I'll show you that here's the difference now this is what's left of the multi-year ice that um, gradually migrated down during the winter and so that's here in the Beaufort Sea getting broken apart and then what we have above Canada and Greenland um, it's it's um, not as thick and not as concentrated and it's also starting to come out through these tributaries <coughs> here's what it looked like in 2019 for the 17th now um, see the Beaufort Sea was opened up um, here on uh, just north of Alaska that it opened up early here um, we had more ice that extended to the Siberia coastline here and um, not uh, see the Kara Sea it was opened up so no thick sea ice here in the North Kara Sea and here the ice had kind of a, a triangle shape going out here it was in 2018 I started following all this in 2018 and I didn't get you know I, I just learned as I went you know so um, you, you get more proficient at reading this stuff and reporting on it as time goes on we had thicker sea ice here going all the way across the Arctic Basin you see it was spreading out and <coughs> we don't have we don't have any thick sea ice in this you know around past the North Pole this year <clears throat> here was 2017 so this was before my time uh, at following this here we can see it was opening up along this Beaufort Sea um, along the Alaska and Canadian coastlines it had already opened up uh, around the Siberian coastlines in Russia um, the thick sea ice it had spread out see along Canada and Greenland this <coughs> this doesn't look very good like I said I'm shocked that we hadn't haven't already had the blue ocean event after I looked at these here was 2016 now this was considered a low extent year but look at the thickness of the ice here it's uh, dramatic it's dramatic here with how much thicker it is from 2016 to 2017 lots of thicker sea ice all the way out from uh, quadrants 3 and 4 Here is 2015. Now look at this strange shape. Um, it, what a difference! Um, I, you would, I would have expected 2016 to be more, uh, <coughs> more looking like this, but it was 2015. And for extent, they count every little crumb of ice every little morsel they count it even if it's not healthy ice and, and not very well put together and then the final year that we have in this model is 2014 this was the first year that the Navy did the GLB model look at the difference here it's um, it's dramatic and um, look at all this thick uh, red into the red and the dark red which was five meters thick and above 
um, down here along the Canadian archipelago and up and then we had the greens um, coming out so that was like three meters thick here a lot of aqua here the bright aqua is about mo two meters thick and um, so it was just in a lot better shape in 2014 so there we have it a comparison as far back as we can go accurately in the GLB model for for the Navy and here we are today quite a difference huh so are we going to have the blue ocean event it could happen um, a lot of the climate scientists are saying it'll happen next year it could happen this year um, if we don't have the full blue ocean event down to one what is it one million square kilometers left of sea ice which would be just fringes of ice around the coastlines basically um, if we don't get down to that um, we're, we're already experiencing um, detrimental effects of the changes in the Arctic and the warming and the changes in the jet stream and um, changes in the weather and it'll just keep compiling and building up snowballing so and along with this we also have to think about you know the methane bomb is that going to go off um, this this lap tab C is sure opened up and there are huge methane stores in the sediments there that that are warming up very quickly so and there are methane stores all all throughout not just here um, in the lap tab C but they found them anywhere they've drilled down they found them um, in the Arctic and there are other places too not just in the Arctic <clears throat> so so I'll go through this one more time just so you have an idea here we were in 2014 um, looking a lot better 2015 looks awful here's 2016 2017 2018 2019 here's 2020 and here we are this year so as this thins out and melts what will be the last ice that will be left will be I'm thinking around the Greenland and Canada coastlines and whatever's remnant of the thickest sea ice is left here in the Beaufort Sea if it lasts and we've, st we've got some thicker ice here in the North Kara Sea that's breaking up but you know that's not enough to to reflect the radiation in the sunlight so I'm going to put this on YouTube for everyone and so be sure to join me Sunday for my weekly update and um, I'm praying for all of you we are living I believe in the end times and we need to prepare prepare for exit you know prepare spiritually and um, that's the best preparation so I love you all, and until next time, God bless you. Go in peace, and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.